All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're checking out an updated video on Any Converter, the free edition, also called Any Video Converter Toolkits, which is a video converter that hosts both the ability to convert videos and a number of handy tools to do some basic edits to your videos in the event that you quickly need to convert it do us some edits and then get it ready for either a video presentation or maybe even prime time. Just depends on whatever your situation is. And the biggest improvement over the older editions of any video converter is that the interface is a lot more simplified, whereas the last one, it kind of looked like the controls to an alien spaceship. Uh, in comparison, you can see at a glance all of your different tools by just paging through a couple pages of different buttons. That includes everything from formatting your video to a different type. So like going from an MP4 to an MOV, you can merge video, trim video, compress video. You can do screen recording, webcam recording, add subtitles, overlays, and even burn a DVD. And that's actually not a feature that you see very often. In fact, more software is removing that feature than adding it. So having the ability to do that if you need it is important. But the primary thing I'm interested in checking out here today is how well does it convert video? So we're gonna click on Format Convert, which is our video format converter. And I'm gonna open up a file and I've actually got a folder full of video samples that I can convert. And we'll start out with trying to convert a Apple QuickTime MOV into an MP4. So to change that over, I'm gonna go over here to the right hand side under output options, and I'm going to select the MP4 video type here at the top. Now you have a couple of options here. You can either do it manually, which I'm about to do, or there's a tab here at the top of this pull down menu, and they've actually got some presets put together for different device types. Like the first one is for your Windows devices. You can make it into a WMV, a Windows movie file type, a Microsoft AVI movie, or just your, your typical MP4. You've also got different Android devices, or your various Apple iPhone, iPad, or TV devices. These are preset settings that are kind of set up to make it easy to use your video with those specific devices. So if you're gonna use one of those, by all means, grab one of the presets, they make it super easy to just click, convert, and go. But I'm gonna just do it manually. So I'm gonna select MP4. I want the quality to be as high as possible. I want the original video resolution, but I can make that up to 400% bigger if I want to. So you can blow up the video. That's especially handy if you have a smaller one that you wanna increase the size of for a presentation. And then I want the lossless quality with the original frame rate. Um, actually, when I was converting this for a sample, it was originally 60 FPS, but now it's 30. And you could bump it up to 60, but that wouldn't really do anything if the original version that you're working from isn't already 60. So I'm gonna leave that at 30, and then if there's any empty spaces, I'll just let it fill that with a black border bar. And then I'm gonna click Start. You can also click Add to Workflow. This is a new tool which is actually pretty handy. This allows you to make multiple edits to the same video in a row, rather than having to export it, make another change, export it again, and then make another change. So in this case, I can take my sample MOV video, convert it to an MP4, and then I can go over here to video tools and I can say, well, after I'm done editing it, I think I want to um, adjust the color, and then I can put this over here. I can change the settings in here. And then after that, let's say I wanna upload this to either Slack or Discord when I'm done, but it's a little bit too big, then I can go over here and I can compress the video as well. And that will allow me to then compress the video to half of its original size. 
and then I will be good to go. So you can make quickly make multiple adjustments to one video and then just click start once rather than having to make them manually one at a time. It's very convenient and very efficient. But we're gonna cover that in a later video. I'll dive into the more complexities of that. For right now, I'm mostly interested in converting my videos, so I'm just gonna click start, and it'll then begin to process that video, which my videos aren't terribly long. Most of mine are, you know, four to eight minute long tutorials. So even if this was a slow converter, which it's not, it wouldn't take it very long to convert, but this one's about, I don't know, maybe like a four minute video, according to the timestamp over here, just under five. And it's not really even taking me a whole minute to convert this from one file type to another. So this goes really fast. I'm actually quite happy with that. And then once you're done, this is the free version, so it will encourage you to purchase a pro plan and you can quickly see the differences here. You can download videos in higher quality with the pro version. You can split the video into three segments. You can merge up to five videos at once. And then you can make GIFs over 30 seconds long and you can add up to three plus watermarks to a single video. But a lot of this free stuff is just properly free, which is nice to see. So I'll just click on the view output file and here is our sample MOV. Let's see how well that plays. So that's gonna pop open VLC Media Player. Let me just turn down the volume. So it looks snappy, like it plays real nice. It's not weirdly stuttery or jittery. Sometimes when you're working with a free video converter, sometimes some of the sketchier ones, they'll look like they did a nice job, but when you play the video, it'll be stuttery. It'll have problems. There'll be weird glitchy things going on, but this looks smooth. This looks crystal clear and it doesn't have any jitteriness. So this is a good conversion. That was good. So let's check out another one of the other video types. So if I open up my file again, I just did the MOV. Uh, let's check out how well it does in AVI because AVI is one of those file types that seems to always give other video converters a bit of a hiccup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna convert this for a device. I'm just gonna convert this to a standard MP4 and I'm going to allow this to just go. I'm gonna use one of their MP4 presets, just the standard Microsoft Windows MP4 preset and let's see how well that does. So this video is not too, too much longer. It doesn't look like this is a six minute long video. The other one was about four or five minutes. Um, but this is also converting really quickly from an AVI to an MP4. And it's going pretty quick. I'm actually pretty happy with that as well. It's going at 10 times or 10x processing speed. And it says it's got about a minute left, but it's only actually processing for about 30 seconds. So that's a good, that's a good amount of time. And now if we open up the sample here, the AVI conversion sample, so let's go ahead and click play now that VLC's popped open. And again, you can see that the AVI sample from going from AVI to MP4 is still really smooth. And then you can even read very crisply all of the text in the video. So it's good quality, it's nice and smooth, and the audio is all intact. So that's also really good. And then last but not least, what happens if I convert a WMV file to something different. Because we've been converting them into an MP4 file and that's nice and all, but what if I wanted to convert uh, a WMV into a WebM? What would happen then? I want to make this smaller. So let's have, let's compress the video down to 50% of the normal resolution. Let's put the frame rate at just 30. And then the rest of that can stay the same. I like automatic video converters fine, high quality's fine. All that stuff looks good. So let's see how well it does if I convert a WMV file into a WebM. So this is a little bit slower. WebM files are a much more compressed file compared to a lot of the other file types. And it's meant to be a more efficient version that you can put up on the web that is a much smaller file size. So this video is about, oh, 10-ish minutes long. 
this particular sample video that I converted into a WMV. But honestly, it's converting reasonably quickly, despite the fact that it's twice the, sp the length of the other video samples. And it's also converting it into a much more compressed file type of the WebM video. So I'll give this a moment and we'll see how long this is going to take. All right, so it took a little bit longer to process this particular video, but if we're looking at a video that's around 11 minutes and 30 some seconds in change, only taking about half that amount of time to convert from a very large file type down to a much more compressed file type, that's actually not that bad. That's actually a pretty reasonable speed, especially considering like plugins for other software like Adobe software converting to a WebM takes an eternity and a half just to do a, you know, five minute video. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how well the WebM video type plays now that it's done processing. All right, so it opens up and pretty snappily starts playing very smooth. There's no frame rate drop. There's no stuttering or any other strange glitches. So this looks really good. And how big is that once it's done? So the original video was a couple of gigs, and now this much more compressed, easier to use WebM file type is now only 127 megabytes. Whereas a lot of our other two here is one of them here. This MP4 is 190 megabytes, and this much larger MP4 is 2.3 gigs. So the fact that it compressed it down to 127 megabytes, pretty darn good. So yeah, that has been a look at any video converter free edition or the any video converter toolkits. It's a very powerful video converter. It comes in an ultimate version that allows you to convert from a whole host of different file types, over 200 if you decide that you want to buy it. And uh, you know what? Just just for funsies, how much would this cost us if we went to go and buy it? It comes in different versions, so you can get one license billed monthly for $20, which that would make it more of like an enterprise corporate software that can be kind of pricey for at home. But if you wanted to buy a once perpetual license, a one-time payment, it's currently $60, it's normally 80, and considering that if you were gonna use this a lot for video conversion, you'd probably get your money's worth out of it relatively quickly. Um, or you can get the annual auto renewal once a year uh, for $40, which isn't too bad, especially if you find yourself needing 24 seven live support, that can be very handy. If you don't feel like you'll need that, but you still like having that support, but this is more of just like, I wanna pay for it once and use it, $60 is very reasonable for that kind of a software. So yeah, that is any video converter, the free edition. It's a very powerful video converter. That's what I've always loved about this software. The interface makes it even better and you can convert from pretty much any video file type that you'll probably be able to run into, into something a lot more manageable and back if you wanna put it back again. And then it also has a suite of all these other more advanced editing tools that make it quick to add different things or make different adjustments to your videos so that you can do a quick presentation and not have to worry about it. And I'll go ahead and I'll showcase how to use some of these other features in later videos. So until then, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one, everybody, and bye for now.